It's Darcy Lacuvay reporting live from Mobile World Congress 2016. I'm here with two of my esteemed industry colleagues, uh, two gentlemen I have an incredible amount of respect for. We have Ian Ferguson and James Bruce. Essentially, they, uh, they manage and handle all the communications and marketing for ARM on a global basis. And, you know, I had a thought in the taxi today, guys, and that's that, you know, maybe a lot of people actually don't even know what ARM is. And so what is ARM? So I think if you look at ARM, basically what it is, is it's an architecture that we then license to our partners. So it's really the building blocks of innovation. Mm. So it really allows you to have great CPUs, great GPUs put on a wide range of SOCs. What's an SOC, James? A uh, system on a chip. So if you look traditionally, CPUs, you would have a CPU and then you'd have lots of chips around it. But what happens with an SOC is you basically put a computer on a chip. Mm -hmm. And what that really means is that instead of having a great big PCB as you used to have years ago, you can now start having compu computers and really small form factors mm -hmm. like this. And it really helps to do you know, innovative new products. Absolutely. So we, we actually have chips now that actually fit into uh, a dimple in a golf ball, would you believe? I yeah. saw that. I, yeah. In fact, yeah, CS just there, we saw, what was it, a sub one and uh, millimeter. Uh, yeah, so it's 1. Point, uh, yeah, 1. 1. 1.2 millimeter by 2 millimeter yes. chip. Yeah. A heat sensor. Uh, yeah, and we also, had, <laughs> we also had the world's smallest computer, which was even smaller and totally self-powered. So I think that's a yeah. really good proof point. So and, and I know you're, you're into your mobile stuff, but just to give you an idea of the sort of things that might come down the path, um, people have been exploring actually using chips at the back of the eye to mm. actually do a corrective eye work. So, you know, your eye, certainly with my eyes, look, I've got these, right? Mm. So um, over time, they degrade. The idea is that technology yes. could actually mm sort of adjust your eyes over time and and obviously has to get down to the sort of size that James is talking about a millimeter by a millimeter yeah. I mean so everything's getting smaller everything's getting more power efficient we're talking about sub 14 nanometer already being planned you know mm. 10 everything's kind of getting a little bit crazy if you know what I mean not only that in the press uh, the pre-briefing was Samsung where we saw the Galaxy S7 uh, it's still again 14 nanometer for the Exynos 8890 with a bit of controversy behind the, the Mali and the Exynos 8890 is faster and more power efficient potentially than the Snapdragon 820. And we're going to be exploring that very soon with Gary Sims. Um, my question to you is, there's so many different participants in their SOC ecosystem, your partner ecosystem, High Silicon, Qualcomm, Exynos, Rockchip, and so mm. many others. Who's doing the best right now? Uh, so I think the answer to that is it's very much who's got the best handset for you as a consumer because in the end it's not so much about the benchmarks it's when you as a consumer go in there buy the phone that you really like and that's the phone you should buy so you're basically saying benchmarking is dead I'm not saying that benchmarking is dead but what I'm saying is the most important thing to a consumer is you know what's the phone that works for them you know yeah. it can be a combination of the CPU performance yeah. uh, GPU performance but also the mechanics quality of camera etc I think we're gravitating a lot away from specs and more yeah. towards the user experience, you know? Yeah. Consumers demand instantaneous camera, exactly, yeah. instantaneous web browsing, and so forth, and incredibly long battery life, mm. and of course durability of the hardware. Yeah. Um, but talking about just the Kirin 920 and the Exynos 8890, I mean, the 8890 is a really substantial improvement over the 7420. Uh, so can we just talk about uh, what Samsung is doing and about the Exynos? Well, I think if you look at all our partners, you know, every year they do better SOCs. And I mean, for example, if you look at the 8890, it's got the uh, Mali graphics in there, yeah, the T880. T880. Yeah. So we're really proud of that. And, you know, just the new graphical user experiences yeah. that will deliver. 60% more p powerful over uh, the previous generation. That's 62 right. Or 63, yeah. rather. I mean, that's a really impressive number. If you think yeah. that's just one year's uh, difference and your yeah. GPU performance has gone up. Now, I think the critical thing is then to think about, well, what am I going to do with that sort of uh, increased yeah. GPU performance? And obviously, it's going to enable some great games, you know, for example, using the Enlighten technology so you get really nice lighting effects. Or if you're someone like Ian here who's really into VR, um, you know, your VR experience is going to get even better because the more powerful GPU yeah. you have, it means you can have a higher frame rate, exactly. higher resolution more screens, and that helps the overall user experience. Talk about VR. Is it really going to be the next platform? 
So I think the really interesting thing about VR is that we're very much at the start and VR is definitely going to be massive. It's going to go somewhere. The thing is, is that we don't actually know where it is. It's going to, where it's going to end up. It's going to do something really good. If I could actually predict what it was going to do really good, I would actually go and uh, be, do a startup and make lots of money. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I'll say I actually think over time, and this is my personal opinion, is that augmented reality is, is going to be actually bigger than VR. Mm. Um, okay. So actually seeing your real world and then getting extra information, you know, whether you've got a phone and you're holding it up in a, in a new city and mm. you're getting information around that mm. added to your experience. Obviously, if you're in a car and you're driving and you're getting extra information in addition to what you're seeing, mm. um, I actually think that's going to have a wider set of uh, applications over time compared to yeah. VR. Clearly, VR, there's going to be a, the, the ardent gamers and there's going to be a lot of those applications. People People in industrial applications learning about a really tough task in a virtual world yeah. before they go into a coal mine oh, or totally, do it. Totally. So a lot of things there. But I, I, I'm actually much more of a fan of AR because I think that's going to be wider over time personally. I guess the last two questions essentially are, what does the future look like? And you know, what are the challenges, what is the next game changer in terms of how all the processors for mobile and everything that you guys do, you know, essentially. So um, I think the future uh, looks like, depends if you're wearing VR goggles or not, but <laughs> assuming that you're not wearing them, um, I think really the future is, is we're at this stage now where you're getting all this intelligence, connectivity, and I think the critical thing is how do you actually combine that all together and have, should we say, just make it easy such that I walk into my room, it's got an um, arm-powered TV, it's got arm-powered uh, lighting systems, yeah. How does it make the right decisions you know, to turn on the light, do the heating right? And it's just easy such that it's, I don't have to do any work, I don't have to program it. A lot it. of software. Yeah, a lot of software. A lot a of lo software. A lot of intelligence. Yeah. And I think the real key thing is really you're going to see all that computing capability just disappear from the typical consumer. Yeah, and it just, it just does what you want to do. Scary times. Yeah. <laughs> Scary good. Scary yeah. good. Um, no, no, no. You guys are way smarter than I am. So. Yeah. Well, that's true. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think on the direction, um, I'm a big fan of healthcare. We've talked yeah, about it before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, um, you know, using the phone, which is already, as you say, become your primary uh, platform for compute. Um, I'm going to see. I'm going to want to see that really empowering people with healthcare information and be be better, making better choices about what they eat, how they exercise, and clearly there's some pieces starting with that. Um, but we're, we're going to see. I think that in spades, uh, yeah. in terms of giving people uh, much more, whether it's used for clinical diagnosis is more of a debate, but actually empowering people. So I think we'll see that in the handset. We're going to see technology everywhere around mm. us. And for it to be successful, it needs to be almost invisible, right? Yeah. It just We're going to be able to drive through cities easier because technology just helps yeah. us find the way, the right way through. Mm. Um, we'll find technology. They're working on smart yarn. You'll be pleased to smart hear. Smart yarn? Yeah. Smart technology going in there. I love smart yarn. Yeah. So, I uh, love it already. Yeah. Smartyarn.com. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure. Yeah, go get it now. Yeah. Uh, I'm it. Sure, you, uh, <laughs> sure you already got something there. But, you know, if you look at where you're going to get heart rate information, yeah. you're mm. going to see stuff going in here. Taking right? a step Sensors. back, I mean, Okay, there's human incentive and then there's financial incentive. And in terms of the healthcare sort of economy, yeah. it comprises basically about 28 to 32 percent of the entire 115 trillion dollar a year global economy. Mm -hmm. Health is so important because without health, we're dead. That's right. And so, in, from an insurance standpoint, imagine you know you wear a Fitbit, you show that you're a non-smoker, a non-drinker, you're exercising, and mm -hmm. you're eating well, and you know. Yeah, as a result, you should have to pay less yeah. insurance, if any at all. Mm. Um, and, and the whole myriad of other situations, is, yeah. it's almost limitless. Mm. But it all starts at the heart of technology, and like you say, it does have to be invisible. So yeah. that's but why I love talking to you guys, and you know, that's why yeah. you know, we're such huge but, fans. But I think pleasure, so of you, yeah. pleasure for you to come by and your continued interest in uh, <laughs> I, Arm Darcy as well. Yeah. You blow me away. I just, I can't even stay on top of the embed and the Cortex, yeah. you know. Uh, just everything you're doing around IoT, M to M, wearables, smartphones, you know, essentially making low power computing mm. accessible to so many billions of people, and also all the myriad other benefits for, you know, less privileged economies that get to participate. Mm. Like, ten, you, you said last year, James, about the $20 smartphone, but this year we already had a $4 smartphone, you know, so, uh, which a bit controversial. Cause That's right, and I, yeah. I, I think if you look at smartphones, there's a certain price where they can get down to, you know, $20 yeah. or so, but then you just, there's beyond that, 
it's really hard to go below that. I think what you're going to see is not so much a reduction in price, but just better capabilities for that price. So your $20 smartphone in two or three years is going to be way ahead of the one that you could get two years ago. Well, you know, we could talk all day, but yeah. uh, I've been told by the, uh, Josh here that we got to wrap it up. So is there any final thoughts you guys have on your mind? Look forward to seeing you next year. <laughs> well, yeah. I took their, uh, what was it, the skin testing meter. I was uh, looking for yeah. it earlier. So this yeah. little device here, guys, uh, you put it on your skin, and it tells you the quality and age yeah. of your skin. And uh, I'm 32, and it gave me a 32. But Ian here is he's about 65. Uh -huh. and he, he got came a, <laughs> well, to the early point, it yeah. actually came up and said I was dead. Yeah. So uh, 42. He's 42. <laughs> and I'm the same age, almost the same age as Ian, and I'm, as I came up at 35. So <laughs> Wonderful. Well, you gentlemen, you know, thank you so much. You know, we really appreciate yeah. everything. Thanks for coming by. No, thank you so mm. much. Great. Thanks, Thanks so much. much, guys. It's Arm, Arm Auto Cambridge. You know, they are uh, a profound company. If you don't know who they are, I really recommend you do some research on them because they are part of the evolution of technology in a way that few companies are. Um, Thanks for your kind words. All right. no, thank you. Pleasure. Great. Star City Lake of reporting live here from Mobile World Congress 2016. Take care, guys.